Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. All right, welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. For those of you who are joining us online tonight, we are a Unitarian Universalist congregation located in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. I'm Reverend Mandy, and I am so happy that everyone is here tonight, so excited. I also want to say this is a service for families, and we think it's going to get loud and messy, and it's okay. Just let it rip, y'all. It's going to be all right. Unitarian Universalism is a religious home for believers, for doubters, for seekers, for everybody. People in our church believe a lot of different things. What's most important to us is how we treat each other and the world around us. Good evening, everyone. My name is Shannon Snydman. I'm BSC's Director of Religious Education, and I am so happy that you're here tonight. Religious education is really important to our congregation. We have classes for young people during our 1030 Sunday services and monthly multi-generational multi services, which we call Celebration Sundays, on the first Sunday of the month. I hope that you will join us for our first Celebration Sunday of the year on January 8th. In our religious education classes, we are building a community through storytelling, ritual, and practice, and through fellowship and play to broaden our understanding of humanity. You can visit our website or Facebook page for more information. As a reminder, our service is being live streamed. If you have privacy concerns, the chairs in the back two rows don't show up on camera. Now, let's settle in and enjoy or uh, join the many Unitarian Universalists that are celebrating Christmas Eve by lighting our chalice. Many Unitarian Universalist worship services begin with lighting a chalice. This is a symbol of our free religious faith. Tonight, we light our chalice as a beacon of hope on a cold winter's night. This flame is a reminder of the warmth of community and the promise of new life unfolding.
<laughs> the mission of the Birmingham Unitarian Church is to create a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. On Sunday mornings, we take up a collection to support our mission. We usually give away half the money that we collect to nonprofit organizations that align to our values. Christmas is different though. The money that we collect tonight will be used only for our church and our programs like religious education. Providing financial support is a way that you can be a part of the life of the church and help us build the world we dream about. A world where everyone is loved and treated with fairness. So let there be an offering in support of this beloved community and our good works. Thank you. Have you ever heard the story of how Jesus was born in a stable? Good. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about it tonight. So a stable is a type of barn where animals live. It isn't a very nice place for a baby to be born, but that's what people say happened. We're about to hear a story about the birth of Jesus, but this is a story that also tells about the animals that were in the barn, too. They were just as surprised as anyone to see a baby born in a stable. I'm going to need some help, though, in telling this story from everyone in the building and from everyone watching at home. I need your help, too. Everyone knows stories are way better when they have animal noises, right? Yes. yes. So uh, can we just practice making some noises now? So I'm going to tell you the noise of the animal that you should make. And then I'm going to sign for you to, to quiet back down. First, let's try a donkey. Very good. All right, what about a sheep? Awesome. And now a dove. Very good. All right. Uh, okay, now this one's an easy one. How about a cow? All right, so let's get to it. Uh, well, actually, there's one more step. Sometimes during the story, the animals are grumpy. So we need to hear what those animals sound like when they're grumpy. 
Uh, let's practice our grumpy donkey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, and a grumpy sheep. <laughs> okay, now let's get started. Like I said, at this time of year, we see a lot of pictures of Jesus being born in a stable surrounded by animals. But have you ever heard the story of what happened in the stable before Jesus was born? Before they got to the stable, Mary and Joseph had to travel from where they lived, a town called Nazareth, to another town called Bethlehem. Those two cities are very far apart. Mary was close to having her baby, so she rode a donkey, a happy donkey. <laughs> and Joseph walked. The road was dusty, and there were many hills for them to climb. It was a difficult journey, and it took a long, long time to walk that far. When Joseph and Mary and the donkey arrived in Bethlehem, they were all tired. But there was no place for them to stay. All the rooms in the inn were already taken. And because Mary was about to have her baby, they needed to find a place pretty quickly. An innkeeper finally felt bad enough for them that he offered to let them stay in the stable, even though there were no rooms left for them in the inn. There were so many kinds of animals in the stable. There were cows. There were sheep. There were doves. And tons of donkeys. All right. <laughs> And when the animals heard that they were going to be humans staying in the stable, they grumbled. Now the cows were grumpy cows. <sighs> there was one cow in particular who was known to be stubborn, and she was the grumpiest of them all. She just knew those people were going to cause a change in routine and mess everything up. The donkeys were grumpy too. They didn't want to spend any more time with the humans because they made them work hard all day long. And the sheep were grumpy too. <laughs> they were worried the people were going to eat their food and sheep are always hungry. Actually, that's why they were grumpy. They were hungry. But still, they didn't like it. And then there was the dove. She was the grumpiest of all, which is saying a lot because doves are famous for being peaceful. But she knew that the humans were noisy and dangerous. She wasn't having any of it. Together, the animals decided there was no room. And their complaining grew very loud. All of the animals, <laughs> all of them, <laughs> voicing their frustrations. There was so much noise that the innkeeper rushed to the stable to see what was the matter. When the innkeeper opened the door to the stable, something happened. The light from a single star, an especially bright one, shone through the doorway and lit up the corner of the stable where the grumpiest cow was. And the cow felt her heart grow warm. She peacefully mooed Ooh. out to the other animals that she had changed her mind and they should help the humans after all. And then the animals heard the sound of singing in the distance. It was not human music. It was the beautiful sound of the angel choir. The donkey that had carried Mary all the way realized that he was being too grumpy, and he changed his mind too. Let's hear our peaceful donkey. And you know, sheep are followers, so they also agreed to be peaceful. Ah. And the super grumpy dove decided that if everyone else was able to get over it, she could too. 
The complaining settled down into peaceful, happy sounds from all of the animals. Then a young woman and her husband walked in. The animals were surprised at how tired and gentle they were. As animals often do, they sensed that these were good people. The animals moved back a little and made room for the couple in a corner where the hay was fresh and the stable grew quiet. It was that night in the stable that Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She named him Jesus. The animals were surprised to see how very much like their own babies he was, tiny and vulnerable. And then their hearts were moved to love and generosity, and they gave him gifts. The cow, who had been the most concerned about the people, gave him her manger for his bed. The sheep gave him wool for a blanket to keep warm. The donkey's gift was that he was quiet which is rare for a donkey, <laughs> and took a lot of effort on his part. And that one super grumpy dove actually cooed him to sleep. These were the first Christmas gifts given by the animals in the stable to the baby Jesus. So at Christmas time, when we receive gifts and presents from people who love us, Remember that cold, dark night when the animals learned to open their hearts. Right there, in a place that wasn't special at all, something very special happened. When they opened their hearts, they were changed forever. Love changed them, and it changed the world too. And the next song that we're going to sing is called Jesus, Our Brother. And the animals are in this song, too. <laughs> Will you join me? OK. <laughs>
So as we listen to the story of the unfriendly beasts and saying the carol, Jesus our brother, what are some thoughts that came to mind? What do you think about how the animals reacted to the humans sharing the stable with them? If you have any thoughts, go ahead and raise your hand and Reverend Mandy will come over with the mic so everybody can hear what you have to say. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. So what are some thoughts that came to mind as you listened to the story and as we sang the carol? Where's the cow? I mean, horses. The horses, hmm. Or the pigs. Maybe they're not native to the area, so we just don't see them there. <laughs> uh, horses were a symbol of empire, but that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> that would be for the Romans. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Why did it say that the cow was white and red? So cows come in lots of different varieties of colors. So maybe this particular cow had a red and white coat instead of like a black and white one that maybe we're used to. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there another hand over this way? Any other thoughts? We learned that the animals were not really excited about sharing their stable with Mary and Joseph. The cow was the most upset about it because she knew that humans were gonna change her routine, mess everything up maybe. The doves were afraid that um, the humans might be too dangerous to share their space with. And the donkeys are tired of working so hard for humans. The sheep, as we know, are always hungry, so they were worried that there wasn't going to be enough food. These are also some of the same reasons that humans don't like to do new things. Like the cow, we want things to be predictable. Like the doves, well, we <laughs> can be disturbing. Uh, like the donkeys, we can be resentful. And like the sheep, sometimes we have a hard time sharing but something changed for those animals. They realized that something special was about to happen and they wanted to be a part of it. And there, in the most ordinary of stables, on the most ordinary of nights, something extraordinary happened. They let go of their plans and their expectations for life and they simply opened their hearts to joy and love. That's all it took just opening their hearts, and love did the rest.
Lighting candles is a Christmas tradition. We light candles as a reminder that love can change us and that there is always hope. There are both real candles and plastic candles for you to light. You can come forward as a family and light a candle together and then grab a plastic candle for each of you to take back to your seat. When you light your real candle, place it as far back as you can and I invite you to say something that you can do to spread love in the world. For those of you on Zoom, I invite you to light a candle at home or imagine a light glowing in your heart. You can say what you want to do to spread more love as well.
We go now back out into a world that is literally dark and cold, and it needs this light. So take with you some of the love and the hope and the joy that you found here tonight. Go and be a beacon of that love, hope, and joy. May it be so. Amen and blessed be.